Are you afraid of the stock market because of its ups and downs? Do you get sweaty and nervous even thinking about the financial market? And if you'll lose your money in a market crash? If yes, then don't worry. The up and down nature of a stock market can feel similar to a rocking roller coaster. That's why we've decided to give you some pro tips on how to ride this roller coaster, especially stock market corrections, and how you can maximize your gains. Let's take a closer look at corrections first. Corrections are natural. There is a simple explanation behind the up and down nature of stocks. They are run by millions of people reacting to news and events. Or in a single word, emotions. Rather than get pulled into the daily fluctuations, professional investors ride the rhythms to maximize their investments. Just like the Buddha. The pros understand the universal truth. Corrections and sluggish markets should not drive you away from stocks. Here's why. Are you afraid of investing? The fear of investing in the stock market is far worse for your savings than losing money. A Charles Schwab study observed S&P 500 investors and their habits. How would they perform if they invested $2,000 annually on different days? The best day, the worst day, or the 1st of January? The study took the returns over these investors over a 20-year period, then compared it to those who invested $0 in the market. The results are an eye-opener. An investor who placed $2,000 on the 1st of January for 20 years finished with $167,422. Another investor who timed their money for the lowest price day each year averaged $180,150, only slightly higher. Now the person who invested on the slowest day each year still ended with an average of $146,743. Compare these numbers to someone who never invested, they only reaped the $65,715 after 20 years, less than half of what the lowest returns on the stock market. The moral of the story, investing in stocks is playing it safe. Not investing is the risky habit. Pro tip, don't wait for the perfect moment to invest. Check out brokerage platforms such as Betterment where you get up to one year free. Acorns is another option. They round up each purchase you make with your debit or credit card and invest the difference in a diversified portfolio. If you're based in Australia, look at Stake if you want to invest in the US stock market. Now that you have your research in place, time to invest in some stocks. The pros will tell you how you can overcome your fear and dive into the deep end. Let's take a look. 10 Facts About Stock Market Corrections To Quell Your Fears The tips that follow are based on the S&P 500, an index of large cap US companies. You'll find all the data on the market available online at Standard & Poor's. Here's how the professionals invest. 1. Corrections are temporary. A correction or a fluctuation is a drop of 10% or more from a recent market high. Since 1950, there have been 36 corrections in the S&P 500. That comes to an average of one correction every 1.9 years. What you need to know is the market dips, then bounces back. Dips, bounces back again, like a basketball. The good news, there has never been a correction from which the US stock market didn't recover. 2. Most corrections last under 4 months. No correction lasts long. Of those 36 corrections in the S&P 500, 22 of them lasted 4 months or less. The average correction length has been shortening with time. Between 1950 and 1984, 11 of the 22 corrections, 50%, took longer than 104 days to recover. After 1984, only three of the 14 corrections, 21%, took longer than 104 days. One of them was the infamous dot-com bubble. The 2008 recession was the other. Bottom line, you don't need to panic. 3. Bear markets are rare. A bear market is when there is a drop of over 20%. Since 1987 till the start of January 2020, there have only been two bear markets, the dot-com bubble and the 2008 recession. They are also the only two corrections to last longer than 10 months during that period. Bear markets happen just like a perfect storm that occurs once in a while. 4. Volatility rises during corrections. When stocks slide, volatility jumps like a cat on a hot tin roof, spiking skyward. The reason is the volume of trade that occurs, both buying and selling. 
Brett Steenbarger, who coaches hedge fund managers and is a professor of behavioral sciences, gave an enlightening example on Forbes. He showed that during a 2018 dip, trade activity multiplied by 2.5 times. This number further multiplied by two times revealed the sense of volatility in the market. What this means is that don't sell at a loss during a volatile correction period. But you can certainly buy discounted shares in fundamentally sound companies because the overall market drops in a selling frenzy. 5. Emotional decisions equal poor returns Twitchy investors who buy and sell on emotions underperform. One joint study by the University of California Davis and UC Berkeley concluded that these investors tend to trade frequently and have perverse stock selection ability, incurring unnecessary investment costs and return losses. They tend to sell their winners and hold their losers, generating unnecessary tax liabilities. Many are unduly influenced by media and past experience. Another study conducted by the University of Missouri shows that loss aversion causes people to panic sell when markets dip. This leads to only more loss. Here's what you need to keep in mind. Corrections happen. Don't panic and sell. You will only lose money. 6. Dividend Stocks Weather Corrections A study published in Financial Analyst Journal found that high-return stocks showed less volatility even during corrections. The authors divided stocks into groups based on their dividend yield and found that high-returning paying stocks, those with an average dividend yield of 4.3%, had significantly lower volatility than both low-return stocks and stocks that paid no returns at all. The return provides a safety net for the stock price. Even if the price falls, the return rises, making it increasingly attractive to income investors. 7. Corrections are less likely in the third year of a presidential cycle. Economists are divided over the presidential cycle theory of stock returns, but the numbers are persuasive. Yardeni Research Inc. released an interesting study. They demonstrated that since 1928, the average returns in each year of the presidential cycle are as follows. First year, 5.2%. Second year, 4.8%. Third year, 12.8%. Fourth year, 5.7%. Proponents of the theory explain that investors get jittery leading up to the midterm elections because of the uncertainty. After the elections, money is eased back into the market because of relative political stability. Another group of economists reviewed over two centuries of stock market data and had similar findings. Uncertainty causes poor stock performance. The stock market then rebounds in the following year. 8. Corrections recover quick, bear markets don't. Reporting on an analysis by Goldman Sachs, CNBC showed that the average correction in the S&P 500 took around four months to reach its pre-correction peak, roughly the same amount of time to recover as the initial decline took. Bear markets are a different story. They can take 13 months to hit bottom, then an average of 22 months to recover. Bear markets truly frighten investors who then take their time to reinvest. 9. Corrections are unpredictable Corrections occur every 1.9 years on average, but the exact timing cannot be predicted. No one has found a way to predict corrections. When you read a news report about some analyst who predicted the last correction, bear in mind that they probably just got lucky. At any given moment, there are plenty of analysts predicting the next correction. Just because they get luck with one call, it doesn't mean they have found a formula. There are some economic indicators that show when stocks are overbought or when volatility surges. Stocks can be overpriced, but that doesn't mean the crash will happen now. They may continue to grow even more overpriced for years to come before the natural correction occurs. Investment advisor Duncan Rolfe has explained on Forbes what the common indicators are that signal a correction. He also states that you still cannot use them to predict a pattern. 10. After a stock storm, the sun shines brighter. Following the low point in March of 2009, the S&P 500 grew by 69% the next year. That isn't an anomaly. The three previous bear markets lead to an index average 32% growth in the following years. The best returns occur in the first month or two after the market hits rock bottom. After the dot-com bubble collapse, the first month of recovery yielded 15%. 
The first month after the S&P 500 hit bottom in 2009, the growth jumped 27%. This is one reason why you should never stand on the sidelines. By the time you wait and watch and are confident of the recovery, you've already missed much of it. The takeaway. Fear of corrections is the greatest risk to your money. Rather than worry about corrections, follow these fundamentals of stock market investing. Don't try to time the market, try dollar cost averaging instead. As a parting statistic, consider that in the 20 years between 1996 and 2015, the average annual return on the S&P 500 was 8.2%. If you try to be clever and wait for the recoveries, you miss the 10 best days in the stock market during that time. Your annual returns would then drop from 8.2% to 4.5%, all from missing 10 days out of 7,300. Investing isn't about being clever. It's all about discipline with a topping of patience and not letting fear rattle you even when everyone else is panicking. That's it for this episode. If you found the information here useful, hit that like button. And if you want to support us even more, buy us a coffee from the link in the description. If you'd like to see more episodes on financial advice, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications for our latest updates. Good luck and see you in the next episode.